Hello everybody, welcome to Capture One Discussions, where we explore one concept or one uh, functionality inside of Capture One. So this is a little bit longer than the average videos that I do, but I wanted to do something that explored everything you need to know about importing images using Capture One. So this is an essentials video uh, talking about this uh, basic and essential functionality and understanding the options therein. So we are here on my desktop right now and I have have my memory card right there and it is uh, popped into the card reader of my machine. Alternatively, you can import images to Capture One if they are inside of perhaps an external hard drive of some kind and you simply want to index or link them inside of Capture One. That is also possible. We're going to go ahead and open up Capture One here and come to Import, which is up at the top left here, or we could come to File and then Import Images. Now we can also import previous catalogs or sessions but today we are importing images so we're just going to click that right here and it brings up the import option now I have some images from a workshop uh, that I taught last night and those are showing up here but let's explore why that is first and I'm going to collapse some of these so that you can see uh, what we're looking at very discreetly it's going to first look at import from if you are bringing in images from somewhere else, if you're bringing them in from perhaps a, uh, an external hard drive or the main hard drive of your machine, we could of course come in here and we uh, hit choose and it's going to bring up every single place that the computer has access to. And I could bring in images from anywhere I wanted, my external hard drive, hard drive of my machine, uh, but we're gonna come right now to the memory card here. And notice, of course, that with memory cards or with folders on a computer, we have nested folders inside. And we are going to want to make sure that we understand uh, uh, subfolders, right? So I'm going to click here and say review for import brings up these images. If I did not have these images inside of the uh, folder I clicked on, but rather they were inside of a nested folder. I would need to make sure include subfolders was checked here. Uh, right now, I have clicked on this folder, which actually houses these images. But if I had checked on one before it, perhaps, then uh, I would need subfolders to be turned on in order to make sure that I got all the images that were possible. Exclude duplicates is really important. It's looking at the metadata, the date, the name, uh, especially of the file, in order to be able to determine, is this the same image, right, that we already have. So we leave that checked, unless we have reason not to. Let's take a look at where we are importing these two. This is gonna be an important question for us because we have really three options, add to catalog, copy into catalog and copy to folder. Now, what does that mean? Let's go ahead and take a look. I am going to come here and find my catalog. It should be in my pictures folder unless you decide to save it somewhere else, which is totally fine. This is the actual file that's created when you create your catalog. Now, this looks a little bit different on PCs as opposed to Macs, which is totally fine, um, because in, in Macs, they like to have what's called a package folder. You'll see this just as uh, a regular folder uh, if you're working on a PC, but inside of a Mac, we have to show package contents. This is gonna show the actual uh, file here that is my catalog, okay? Uh, so. Uh, this is the actual catalog, and you'll see that creating the catalog automatically created something called originals right there. Capture One likes to create a way to store images alongside the actual database. You do not have to use this, but it is the default when you create a catalog. And so this is my actual catalog file. This is where images are defaulted to go right here in originals. Now, would you use this? If you want to keep all of your images on your machine, you certainly can, and that's totally fine. The reason a lot of people don't is, first of all, that's on your machine's hard drive and it doesn't provide for redundancy necessarily. 
The second reason is that oftentimes people can have more storage on an external hard drive than they have on their machines. So for instance, my external hard drive is actually a RAID device that has over seven terabytes still remaining available on it, way more than my computer has. And so I keep my photos on an external hard drive, but I keep my actual catalog on my machine. The reason for this is keeping the image, uh, keeping the actual database on my machine makes it run a little bit faster, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, you could keep it alternatively uh, on your actual external hard drive and it will run, it's just moderately slower. But I don't like to keep my images on my computer. So if I wanted to keep my images on my computer, which I did for a long time, the um, the inside catalog option is totally fine and feasible. You don't have to use it, um, but a lot of people don't. So let's take a look at our options. That's what it means, by the way, when it says we could add our copy into the catalog. So add to catalog means that we are simply indexing. Okay, that means that the file stays where it is on your external hard drive, on the hard drive of your machine, we're just connecting to it, no problem. Copy into catalog, on the other hand, actually makes a copy. So here's the way that we do this. When we are adding something to the catalog, that means we are finding something that's already on the machine. So if you have images that are already on your machine, that's great, we add them. If you're coming in from a memory card, then we are going to copy, all right? now. Do I want to copy into the catalog? Well, I just told you that I don't like to do that. I copy into a different folder, which is totally fine. Now, the one that I previously used is right here, 2023. It gives me my previous option. So I'm gonna to come to copy to folder to show you just choosing it. And it's just gonna give me a window where I can uh, find what folder do I want to save stuff into. Uh, and it's just gonna bring up a window here. So it's gonna give me all the things I have access to on my machine, okay? And I'm going to have my photos uh, folder inside of my external drive. I'm gonna find 2023 right there. This is what I like, and I'm gonna set this as my import folder. It will remember it for next time. Now, if I wanted to create a subfolder every time I imported, I could do that and I could have it right here. I could type in a name and create a subfolder that this import would go into. I could also use the token system here in order to name it. The way a lot of people do this is they'll have an image date, drop that in, and now every time that you import, it will create a subfolder, drop the current import in using the images date. Totally viable way to do that. I don't, I dump everything into one big folder, but it's completely viable, all right? Now, let's take a look at some other stuff. If I wanted to group these images, which I can do calling later on, the group overview shows up here. If I enable this, it's going to find this is one group of images based on similarity, these, this is a group, then I've got three that are right here that are grouped together. And so I could have these just kind of automatically thought of as, uh, as units for the purpose of culling images later on. It doesn't affect the import in any way, um, but it does help out in sorting through the images later because the enabled groups needs to happen and takes up some processing power as you saw uh, when I clicked on that box. So you can do it now, you can do it later, uh, it, it'll work either way. Face focus setting is uh, actually pretty cool. This is when you are doing some culling views and what it allows for is double checking the focus of a sequence of images. Now, I don't like the 100%. I like to limit to face to double check the face focus or you could limit to eye, which is gonna come into the subject's eye to double check focus. That's really helpful in the culling view, which is neat. So. Um, I'm gonna set this to limit to face, and that's gonna help us out. All right, so let's take a look at filtering. This is going to filter the images that we have available for import. Now, I don't filter a lot of images at the moment of import because I want everything on the machine, but I could limit the date that they came in from. If I rated them in my camera, 
I would be able, which I did not do this time, I would be able to select the rating that I wanted to import. But probably the most useful thing inside of filtering is if you shoot RAW plus JPEG and you have the uh, JPEGs just as a backup, don't import them, right? Uh, instead, you would be able to come to Format right here and only decide to import your raw images. This would be a way of being able to shoot raw plus JPEG, have the JPEGs as some kind of just in case, whatever your purpose is there, but only import the raw files. So that's actually got a lot of utility for some of my uh, clients. All right. The next thing we're going to look up is look at is backup. If you automatically backup, if you wanted to, you could backup images onto an external hard drive uh, immediately as you import. So if we did, we could say backup uh, enabled, and we'd be able to choose where we're going to set an, the same images upon import. So if you don't have some kind of a, a backup system for your data, this is helpful because we can have these in two places. Make sure that they're different hard drives, but we'd be able to come through here and decide anything we wanted for uh, where the location of backed up images goes. I uh, store my images on a RAID device, so they have a redundancy for backup built in, so I don't do that, but it is possible right here at import, which is nice. All right, let's take a look at naming. I wanna spend a little bit more time on the token system here. So we can, and I believe should, rename images upon import. The format is how, do, how does the format look Job name is going to be uh, important. Uh, so right now I'll just call this portrait, which is fine for the moment. Um, and then it gives me a sample. So for instance, if I was to click on an image, this would say that the name would be portrait August 27th, 2023. Why? Well, let's take a look at my format. I'm gonna click the three dots. This is the token system of Capture One. And this is how automatically generated naming works. In Capture One, it's good to get comfortable with this. So we can build a format where things are named in the same way every single time, right? That we do anything, right? And then we can save those as presets. You'll see that I have one particular one uh, here called job name, which is the way that I like to do it. I don't use any other presets for bringing in images, though there are quite a lot of ones that are built in. Well, what does this mean, right? Let's say that I wanted to name my images off of something that I typed in, but then I wanted a counter, okay? The most important of all of these is job name. Now, why is job name the most important? The reason is it's the thing you get to type. So if I come over here, we see format and job name. I could type in anything that I wanted into here. And then that would be, if we look at sample, the name that is put onto the image. But job name, whatever I type, is only applied if the format that I use includes job name. So let's come back into this. So job name is here, but then I could put a counter, right? If you do the drop down. Uh, on the if, so, so any of these that have a little arrow or a drop down, let's say I wanted a two digit counter. I could drag this up and then I would have job name and counter, right? So here, uh, this would, uh, for instance, I'll type in anything again, be called anything 01, all right? Why does it go anything 01 without a space? Because I never typed a space. I can come in here, add a space, and now I'm able to have a space in between the two tokens. In fact, I could type in anything that I wanted to and it would be fixed text at that point, which is useful. All right, um, so what's the preset that I personally like? I have, if we come in here, job name, a space, and then the image's date. And that's just a helpful thing for me. But anything in here that's a token, we could add in anything whatsoever and we've got lots of searchable criteria from the flashes mode to the drive mode you shot at or anything all right and then once we have a format we like we can come to presets and we could save whatever we have as a custom preset so that's used in the exact same way every time so i'm going to type this in just as portrait okay and then we're in pretty good shape for that 
All right, so metadata comes next, and this is metadata that gets stamped on to the image. So I could type in the business name here, uh, and of course, um, portrait workshop as my description. So this is where we get some data we can stamp onto the images, which is particularly uh, beneficial. Right, um, have something at least your name inside of here. It gets stamped into the data of the file and uh, is your protection against somebody stealing your work down the road. So the next one is adjustments. Uh, now adjustments is some edit that we apply to the image, but it must be saved as a style or as a preset in order to be applied. That's really important. Uh, and so you can't just do any old adjustment. We have to have saved it, or we could use a built-in style of preset. So if you had a particular black and white uh, style that you loved, uh, or perhaps some kind of a film look that you loved, you could apply it at import. You could also apply them after the fact. So this is not a now or never kind of a situation. If you have one, add it in. You could also do the auto adjust uh, and the auto adjust is going to basically do the auto tone feature um, uh, for your basic adjustment. I don't tend to do any significant thing here, but of course it's totally viable to be able to do so. When we come to file info, this is going to give us the data that is captured by the camera, right? So the camera has said, we have recorded the name of the file from the camera, the date, the exposure data, make and model, um, you know, what kind of file it is. Nothing really here that is alterable, but if you want to double check that you're receiving accurate information from your camera, you'd be able to double check it here. Lastly, we have after import. I like to have eject card turned on, but I don't like to erase images through the computer. I want to format my card on my own. We could uh, decide to notify me when it's finished importing, um, whatever we kind of want to do. But I'm going to say open collection, which is going to open up my most recent imports. So now that that is done, I can take a look at the actual importer, right? All of these things the way I want them. The most important three, by the way, are import from, import to, and naming. Those three make sure you look at with every single import. Okay. Now I could come to one at a time viewing if I wanted to and that would be absolutely fine. No problem. Please notice by the way up here that it's got the face focus view right? Because we turned that on on the face focus settings. If I said limit to eye it would jump into the eye. Right? Amazing, cool. And these are the groups I'd like to point out. So if I've got groups enabled, I see the actual groups. So these are the seven images part of this group. The seven comes from right here. That's how many pictures are in the group. And now I can take a look at the best images and double check my focus. Did I get focus appropriate? If I want to spend some time in here and find an image and go, oh, I really don't like that one, I could not check it. I could not have that added right? Totally fine because I'd be able to double check my focus or the face view, whatever I want. I could turn off the face focus view here, but honestly, I like to leave it on. I think that's really beneficial. So if I want to be really certain that the images are in focus before I even bother importing them, just to save some of that step, I think that's totally fine. Works awesome. Um, now I can come back to grid view, but if I wanted to have this added in, right, I could check mark it there or I could check mark it here. Either place is totally fine. Now if I wanted to highlight everything, I could click on any image, hit Command or Control A for all and hit S and it's going to uh, check everything. I could also um, come down to the keyboard shortcuts here and it will tell me how to do any kind of navigation. So I know if I hit A, it's going to be unpick all. S is going to be to pick all, okay? And I could click the space bar to pick slash unpick anything I wanted to. So this one here is definitely underexposed. I'm just going to hit the space bar and I'm going to take it away. 
This is obviously overexposed. I don't want it. In fact, I know that this whole sequence didn't really work out the way that I wanted it. So I'm going to get rid of those. Everything else I'm going to at least import to take a look at. But if I wanted to be sure about focus, I could come back into here and double check focus before even importing them. Great. So I have this way of taking a look at my images and double checking that I'm only bringing in the ones I want. Can you go through images after importing and just get rid of them? Of course you can. This just saves a little bit of that step. If I double click an image, I will come into full view, of course, which is nice. Hit G for grid and it goes back to the grid view. I could also change the size of my thumbnail here in order to take a look. Once I have all of that, I can hit import the 16 images. And what's going to happen is it is going to put them where I said and in the way that I said, which in this case was to copy them into the folder because they're coming in from a memory card. They're going to come in from the memory card I suggested or told it to. And if I come to naming, I know exactly how they will be named. I'm going to hit import 16 images right here with the activities box. It's going to say how that import is going. And I want to show you the next and last important trick when we are importing in order to make sure that we can find everything we're looking at later on. All right, really, really important. All right, so the import has completed and what it's done is immediately opened up because I told it to the most recent imports collection right here. So let's take a look at the library tool. I'm going to stretch this guy out and we will remember that inside of the library tool, there are three things, catalog collections, user collections and folders. Folders is the actual physical location of images. That's really the topic of another video. User collections are the collections I create, but the catalog collections are the ones made by Capture One. Let's take a look at these. I have every single image, my 10 most recent imports, my 10 most recent tethered captures, and my trash. So if I come into most recent imports, by default, the most recent thing I imported is going to be at the top right here. And that is what automatically opens because that's what we said to do after import. So what I have, if I just click on my most recent import, is I will have, and let's bring this up here, my images. There they are, 16 of them. Let's go to full screen and we're going to see my 16 images are right here. So let me show you just a fast trick because this is just an import. After I do 10 more imports, this is going to drop away, right? So I'm going to highlight all of these, okay? And then I'm going to come to user collections. I'm going to then hit plus and I'm going to create an album, okay? My uh, talent's name is Michelle portrait shoot. All right, so I'm going to type in a new uh, name, right? A new album name. And I'm going to add selected images after creation. So I've selected images. And now what I'm going to do is simply make an album that actually has them, right? Great. And I'm just going to hit OK. okay. All right, so now I have an album that I've created that has the name I wanted. And now those images are actually organized in something I can find. Now I happen to have a, uh, an, a collection of portraiture albums and I can just drag it right inside of there. And of course you create your groupings um, right here under user collection. So I can hit plus, I can create a group. I have a group called portraiture. I threw it right in. Great. So I have now these 16 images and they are now completely searchable and findable. But let's go ahead and take this a little bit farther in the searchability. I want to take a look at adding keywords. So I've got a, an album that I can find. What I'm going to do is add keywords so that these are findable things. Well, I'm going to add portrait, but look at that. I've already used the word portrait as a keyword before, so it auto populates. I'll just highlight it and hit enter. There's another way to be able to add in uh, a keyword. Uh, and that is going to be come to the keyword library. This was part of a class uh, where I was teaching some flash techniques. And I've already used the keyword flash. It's right here. So I can literally just click on it 
and that gets added in as well. So I could come to portrait, I could hit enter, and it gets added. So two different ways of adding keywords depending on if you have used this or uh, used that keyword or not. So now if I was to do something that searched for flash or searched for portrait, it would come up. So now I have imported images, I have named them in a way that I wanted, I know exactly where they're located on the hard drive, I have made a uh, an album for uh, those particular images so I can find this shoot, and I have key marked, uh, keyworded the images so that they're searchable. The very last thing would be to rate them. All right, so let's take a look at this. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to deselect all, and I wanna show you my system for rating um, that works for me. I'm gonna to come to my first image it uh, doesn't matter which one you click first. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a filtered view. I want to only look at images that have no rating. All right, so it's right here under filters. You hit none under rating. Now, why is that important? Because this image I know is not one of my best. So I, I initially use a, a one, three, or five star system. You can do whatever you want, but I do recommend rating. A one star means it's trash, delete it. A three star means eh, it's okay. A five star is something I want to continue forward with. So this is a three star. But since I'm only filtering by things that have no rating, if I rate this, it drops out of viewing. So I'm gonna highlight it, hit three on my keyboard for three stars, it rates it, and then it vanishes. That's a five star, that's a three star, maybe that's a five star. I like that one, that's pretty good. That might be a three, that might be a five. Um, and I'm going to come through and I'm going to uh, make relatively snap decisions about how I uh, like a particular image. And once I have made one, three, or five star decisions, this drops into zero. So now I can only look at my favorite images if I want to by clicking on the five stars. In this way, I know that I have looked at every single image that uh, was in a shoot, I've actually touched them all, and I will not spend time editing any image that I do not like. That's incredibly valuable because I want to only spend time editing things that are really worth it. So this is an image that is absolutely worth my time editing, I'm gonna spend some time on it, and I'm not gonna look at ones that really didn't turn out very well. Okay, so that is importing from very beginning to having fully searchable images inside of Capture One. I hope that this has been helpful to you. Uh, YouTube's made out of buttons. Click some of them, and I'll see you next time. All right, bye.